In this video, we will explore the top 25 structural engineer interview questions that candidates often encounter. These questions cover essential topics that assess both technical knowledge and practical skills in the field of structural engineering. We will also provide sample answers to help you prepare effectively. Whether you're a fresh graduate or an experienced professional, this guide aims to enhance your interview readiness and boost your confidence. 1. What software tools are you proficient in for structural analysis and design? When it comes to structural analysis and design, I am proficient in several software tools. Primarily, I use SAP 2000 for general structural analysis, ETABS for building analysis and design, and SAFE for slab design and foundation analysis. For detailed design, I often utilize AutoC, A, D for drafting and Revit for building information modeling, BIM. Additionally, I have experience with RISA and STAAD Pro for specific design challenges. Each tool has its strengths, allowing me to adapt to various project requirements effectively. I continuously seek to enhance my skills with emerging technologies in the field. 2. Can you explain the difference between ultimate limit state and serviceability limit state? The ultimate limit state, ULS, refers to the condition beyond which a structure or its components fail to perform their intended function, typically involving strength and stability considerations. In contrast, the serviceability limit state, SLS, focuses on ensuring that a structure remains functional and comfortable for users under normal operating conditions. This includes factors like deflection, vibration, and durability. While ULS ensures safety against collapse, SLS ensures that the structure meets usability standards, balancing safety with user experience. Both states are crucial for comprehensive structural design. 3. How do you approach the design of a structure to withstand seismic forces? Designing a structure for seismic forces involves several key steps. First, I conduct a thorough site analysis to understand the seismic risk and soil conditions. Next, I utilize appropriate building codes and standards that specify design criteria for seismic resilience. I focus on creating a balanced structural system, incorporating features like energy dissipation devices and base isolators. Rigorous modeling and simulation techniques are employed to predict how the structure will behave during an earthquake. Collaboration with geotechnical and structural engineers ensures that all aspects are covered in the design. 4. What factors do you consider when designing a foundation for a high-rise building? When designing a foundation for a high-rise building, several key factors must be considered. First, the soil type and its bearing capacity are critical, as they influence the foundation depth and type. Load distribution from the building's weight and lateral forces, such as wind or seismic activity, must also be analyzed. Additionally, the groundwater level needs consideration to avoid potential flooding or soil erosion. Local building codes, environmental impact, and construction methods are vital to ensure safety and stability. Lastly, any future expansion plans should be incorporated into the design. 5. Describe the process you use to calculate wind loads on a structure. Calculating wind loads involves several steps. First, I determine the geographical location and the corresponding design wind speed using local codes. Next, I analyze the building's height, shape, and exposure to wind to establish the appropriate wind pressure coefficients. I then apply these coefficients to calculate the wind pressure on different surfaces of the structure. This calculation often includes considering dynamic effects for tall structures and ensuring compliance with relevant standards. Finally, I verify the results by checking against different load scenarios and factors that may influence wind behavior, such as nearby buildings and terrain. 6. How do you determine the appropriate load combinations for structural design? Determining appropriate load combinations for structural design involves analyzing various loads that a structure may encounter throughout its lifespan. This includes dead loads, live loads, wind loads, seismic loads, and other environmental factors. I refer to relevant building codes and standards, such as the ASCE 7 in the US, which provide guidelines for load combinations. By applying different load factors to these loads based on their probability of occurrence, I ensure that the structure is designed to safely withstand the maximum expected loads while maintaining functionality and safety under diverse conditions. 7. Can you explain the concept of pre-stressed concrete and its applications? Pre-stressed concrete is a method of reinforcing concrete by introducing internal stresses before any external loads are applied. This is achieved through the use of high-strength steel tendons that are tensioned and anchored within the concrete. The primary advantage of pre-stressed concrete is its ability to resist tensile forces, allowing for longer spans and reduced member sizes. Common applications include bridges, parking garages, and high-rise buildings, where the enhanced load-bearing capacity and minimized deflection are critical for structural integrity and performance. 8. Describe a challenging structural problem you've encountered and how you solved it. One challenging structural problem I faced involved designing a bridge in an area prone to seismic activity. The initial design did not adequately account for the forces generated during an earthquake, leading to concerns about structural integrity. 
To address this, I collaborated with a geotechnical engineer to understand soil behavior during seismic events and revised the design to include base isolators and reinforced concrete elements. This not only improved the bridge's resilience but also ensured compliance with updated safety regulations, ultimately resulting in a successful project outcome. 9. How do you approach optimizing a design for both safety and cost-effectiveness? To optimize a design for safety and cost-effectiveness, I start by conducting a thorough analysis of the project requirements and constraints. I utilize advanced modeling tools to simulate various design scenarios, allowing for a balance between structural integrity and material efficiency. Engaging in collaborative discussions with the project team helps identify potential cost-saving measures without compromising safety standards. Regular reviews of industry best practices and standards ensure that the design remains compliant and efficient. By incorporating feedback and iterating on designs, I can refine solutions that maximize performance while minimizing costs. 10. What methods do you use to verify the accuracy of your structural calculations? To verify the accuracy of structural calculations, I employ several methods. First, I conduct manual checks of critical calculations, ensuring they align with software outputs. I utilize peer reviews, where colleagues examine my work to catch any potential errors. Additionally, I use multiple software tools for cross-verification, as different programs may approach calculations uniquely. I also compare results against established design codes and guidelines, ensuring compliance with industry standards. Lastly, sensitivity analyses help identify how variations in input parameters impact outcomes, reinforcing the reliability of the calculations. 11. How would you assess the structural integrity of an existing building? Assessing the structural integrity of an existing building involves a comprehensive approach. First, I would conduct a visual inspection to identify visible signs of distress, such as cracks, deflections, or corrosion. Next, I would gather historical data, including original design documents and maintenance records. Non-destructive testing methods, like ultrasonic or radiographic testing, could be employed to evaluate internal conditions. Load-bearing capacity should be assessed through calculations based on current building codes and standards. Engaging structural health monitoring systems can provide ongoing data about performance and safety. 12. Explain your process for conducting a failure analysis of a collapsed structure. Conducting a failure analysis of a collapsed structure involves several key steps. First, I gather data on the structure's design, construction methods, and materials used. Next, I inspect the site to collect physical evidence, including debris patterns and any remaining structural elements. I then analyze these findings alongside relevant codes and standards. Collaboration with other experts, such as geotechnical engineers or material specialists, is essential. Finally, I compile a detailed report outlining the root causes of the failure, potential design flaws, and recommendations for future projects to prevent similar occurrences. 13. What types of structures have you designed or worked on in your career? Throughout my career, I have designed and worked on a variety of structures, including residential buildings, commercial complexes, bridges, and industrial facilities. Each project presented unique challenges that required tailored solutions. For instance, I worked on high-rise buildings where I focused on optimizing structural integrity against wind loads. Additionally, I participated in retrofitting historic structures, ensuring they meet modern safety standards while preserving their architectural significance. My experience spans both new constructions and renovations, allowing me to appreciate diverse engineering approaches and techniques. 14. Can you describe a project where you had to work within tight budget constraints? Working on a community center project, I faced significant budget constraints due to funding limitations. To address this, I collaborated closely with the client to prioritize essential features while identifying areas for cost savings. We opted for more affordable materials that maintained structural integrity without compromising safety. I also streamlined the design process by using standard construction methods and minimizing complex elements. Regular communication with the contractor ensured that we adhered to the budget while making necessary adjustments throughout the project. This experience reinforced the importance of flexibility and creative problem solving in engineering. 15. How do you ensure effective communication between structural engineers and architects? Effective communication between structural engineers and architects is crucial for project success. I prioritize regular meetings and collaborative design sessions, ensuring that all parties are aligned on project goals and expectations. Utilizing visual aids, such as sketches and 3D models, helps bridge the gap between different disciplines. I encourage open dialogue, where questions and concerns can be addressed promptly. Additionally, using project management tools can streamline communication by providing a centralized platform for sharing updates, documents, and feedback throughout the design process. 16. Describe a time when you had to make significant design changes mid-project. How did you handle it? During a mid-project review, we identified that the original design did not meet the new environmental regulations that had been enacted. 
This required a complete redesign of the facade to improve energy efficiency. I convened a meeting with the project team, including architects and consultants, to brainstorm solutions. We quickly evaluated alternative materials and design approaches. By fostering open communication and collaboration, we developed a new design that not only complied with the regulations but also enhanced the building's aesthetic appeal. Regular updates kept stakeholders informed, ensuring a smooth transition. 17. What experience do you have with building information modeling, BIM, in structural engineering projects? Building information modeling, BIM, has been integral to my approach in structural engineering. I've utilized BIM for various projects, enabling enhanced collaboration among stakeholders. Using software like Revit and Tecla structures, I've created detailed 3D models that allow for accurate visualizations and clash detection, minimizing errors during construction. My experience includes coordinating with architects and MEP engineers to ensure seamless integration of systems. This collaborative environment fosters more efficient project timelines and helps identify potential issues before they arise, leading to improved project outcomes. 18. How do you stay updated with the latest building codes and standards? To stay updated with the latest building codes and standards, I regularly participate in professional development opportunities such as workshops and seminars offered by engineering associations. I subscribe to industry publications and newsletters that provide updates on code changes and best practices. Networking with colleagues and attending conferences allows me to exchange knowledge on recent developments. Additionally, I utilize online resources, including code websites and forums, to access the most current information and interpretations of building codes relevant to my projects. 19. What are your thoughts on sustainable design in structural engineering? Sustainable design in structural engineering is crucial for minimizing environmental impacts while promoting resource efficiency. Incorporating renewable materials, optimizing energy usage, and reducing waste during construction are key components. I believe that integrating life cycle assessments can guide decision making, ensuring that structures not only meet current needs but also consider future generations. Collaboration with architects and other disciplines can lead to innovative solutions that enhance sustainability, such as green roofs or rainwater harvesting systems, ultimately contributing to healthier built environments. 20. How do you see emerging technologies like AI and machine learning impacting structural engineering? Emerging technologies like AI and machine learning are set to revolutionize structural engineering by enhancing design efficiency, accuracy, and sustainability. These technologies can analyze vast amounts of data, allowing for optimized designs that consider various factors such as material properties, environmental impact, and structural performance. Predictive analytics can improve maintenance schedules by assessing the health of structures in real time. AI-driven simulations can help in exploring numerous design alternatives quickly, leading to innovative solutions that were previously unattainable. Adapting these technologies will significantly influence project timelines and budget management. 21. What do you consider to be the biggest challenges facing the structural engineering field today? The structural engineering field faces numerous challenges today. One major issue is the integration of sustainable practices into design and construction, requiring engineers to balance performance with environmental impact. Additionally, adapting to evolving technologies, such as automation and artificial intelligence, presents both opportunities and obstacles in workflow and skill requirements. Keeping up with rapidly changing building codes and regulations is crucial for compliance and safety. Finally, addressing the aging infrastructure in many regions poses significant challenges in terms of evaluation, repair, and upgrades. 22. How do you manage your time when working on multiple projects simultaneously? Time management is crucial when handling multiple projects. I prioritize tasks based on deadlines, project complexity, and client needs. Utilizing project management tools helps me track progress and allocate resources efficiently. I set specific goals for each day and week, ensuring I stay focused on high-priority tasks. Regular communication with team members allows for collaboration and quick resolution of any issues. Additionally, I make time for breaks to maintain productivity and prevent burnout, allowing me to approach each project with renewed energy and clarity. 23. Describe your approach to collaborating with other engineering disciplines on a project. Collaboration with other engineering disciplines involves clear communication and a shared understanding of project goals. I initiate regular meetings to discuss project requirements and timelines, ensuring everyone is aligned. Utilizing tools like BIM facilitates real-time collaboration, enabling us to visualize the project and address potential conflicts early on. I prioritize building relationships based on mutual respect and trust, encouraging open dialogue for innovative solutions. By fostering a collaborative environment, we can effectively integrate various engineering perspectives, leading to a more cohesive and successful project outcome. 24. How do you handle disagreements with clients or team members about design decisions? Addressing disagreements requires active listening and understanding differing perspectives. I facilitate open discussions where all parties can express their viewpoints. By presenting data and rationale behind my design choices, 
I aim to clarify any misunderstandings. Finding common ground is crucial, so I explore alternative solutions that may satisfy both sides. If necessary, I involve a third party for mediation. Ultimately, fostering a collaborative environment helps maintain professional relationships while ensuring the project's success remains the priority. 25. Can you give an example of how you've mentored or trained junior engineers in your previous roles? In my previous role, I had the opportunity to mentor several junior engineers through a structured program. I organized regular training sessions focused on specific software tools and design principles. Each session included hands-on activities where they could apply what they learned in real-world scenarios. Additionally, I encouraged them to participate in project meetings, fostering an environment where they could ask questions and engage with more experienced team members. I also provided feedback on their work, guiding them on best practices and encouraging their professional development through constructive criticism and support. In this video, we've explored the top 25 structural engineer interview questions and provided comprehensive answers to help you prepare effectively. Understanding these key topics can set you apart in your interview, showcasing your knowledge and expertise in the field. Whether you're a seasoned professional or just starting your career, these insights will bolster your confidence and readiness. If you found this content helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more valuable resources and tips. Thank you for watching and best of luck with your interviews.